Welcome to Arkansas Basketball Recap. I'm Daniel Price. That's Jacob Price. We're here to recap every Arkansas Razorback basketball game. Tonight we we're recapping Arkansas's 91 to 72 victory over the Pacific Tigers. Arkansas moves to three and one on the season. Before we get into it, I just want to let you know that Wisconsin that over the weekend upset Arizona. They're undefeated. They were uh, coming off being ranked 19th in the country, feeling high on themselves. I just watched the very end of that game as they did win a game by three points to a team that got a shot up at the buzzer. What team was that, you say? Was that like, was it a good team? Was it a team you've ever heard of? No, it wasn't. It was the UT Rio Grande Valley. I don't know what that is. But they almost lost that game. They were trailing a lot of that game. And it made me feel better about the middle half of this game because I I had to be reminded that, you know, a win is still better than a loss. And a 19 win is still better than a three-point win when the other team does have the ball for the last shot. Uh, That I didn't want to have happen and thought with about 12 minutes left in this game that that might happen. And uh, it did not. So that is a good thing. Um, Arkansas played seven guys. Those seven guys are get real tired. Uh, It's we have no depth in the boat. We have no side. I mean, yeah. I mean, and God bless him, dude. Uh, A do Thero play in the five, you know, uh, a lot, you know, I mean, I mean, so big Z played 27 minutes. Uh, Thiero played 29 minutes, but that lets you know that 13 minutes of those 29 minutes, he's playing center, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and that's, that's what you got to do. Yeah. You, you got no Brazil in this game. You got, you know, no, uh, no Jonas to do in this game. Uh, I don't know. I didn't know what happened with Billy Richmond. I don't know if that was a cramp. I don't know what he did to his, his ankle. I don't like that. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, Thin, dude, and uh, yeah, you just got they they get worn down, and that's that's a that's a problem. Uh, we just don't have the depth to the the commentators were talking about. Like, there is no like strategic substitutions. Like, like Cal doesn't have the opportunity to coach with his subs right now. Like, I'm gonna counter that guy with this. No, it's just, uh, just who needs two minutes? I I got I put someone. I'll put this guy in and put this guy out, and then like and it's just trying to get guys a little bit of, of a breather. I mean, DJ Wagner plays 35 minutes. Janelle Davis plays 32 minutes. Boogie Flam plays 32 minutes. The Yarrow plays 29 minutes. Big Z plays 27 minutes. Billy Richmond plays 23 minutes. Carter Knox plays 22 minutes. That's what you got. Uh, and uh, yeah, dude, it's just, it's just that way. And you're, and you're playing small ball a lot. Now, fortunately, like, you know, our guards are kind of big and stuff and, and against, you know, uh, not power five teams, they can match up and stuff, but y- you definitely got to get this fixed. Uh, you got to get these guys healthy before you uh, start playing, you know, the Illinois and certainly the SEC teams of the world. But that being said, uh, there was there was some positives. Uh, Arkansas does score 91 points, so you like that. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, less concerned about the shooting than I was. Uh you know, Big Z hits two more threes. He goes two of five. You know, Thero gets one of two to go. Boogie Flan hits two of four. Janelle Davis hits two of three. Uh, DJ Wagner hits two of four and a really long two, which was foot on the line. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, th- they went nine of 21. That's 42.9%, 43%. Like, that's, you'll take that all day long. I mean, if these guys, if this team can make nine threes a game, I'll, I'm totally fine with that because the main thing they're, they're going to do is try to get downhill and get to the free throw line and get to the cup. Um, so yeah, the, they, they, I thought this game started off better than they have started off in games past. They were turning teams over, getting easy buckets, and they did finish this game pretty well. Uh, there was the sort of second half of the first half that wasn't great, and then sort of the the first half of the second half wasn't great. Uh, some of that is just I and also like dude Pacific the first half just shot the, the living crap out of the ball. Like 
I mean, like we're just shooting at a ridiculous percentage. So that, that was part of it too, but they were tired and, and, and it's, it's hard to defend that scramble, like running around scrambling like that when, when you're just not getting any breaks and, and stuff, but got the win thoughts. It's, it's kind of a hard game to, um, I mean, really, it's just it's hard at this point in the season to make any, you know, really informed critiques. So everything starts to sound a little bit redundant. I mean, you know, overall, I would say I'm relatively still nervous about the team. Um, You know, there's a version of early games where you can't really glean anything, but basically all the information coming at you is positive and by the way that's never that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a good season so, you know you could be blowing all these teams out and look great and then you know have it fall the wheels fall off later in the season we've seen that happen so um but i would say the indicators and the information that we're getting at this early stage are not ideal you know i mean this was another game with um the offense seems a little bit sluggish at first. Justin, I mean, I mean, it's hard to say when you score 91 points, but this this game more than even some games, like they didn't have the personnel to guard our guys. And our guys basically just bullied them uh, the most of the game. But any every time we tried to do something, it didn't really work. I mean, it, it worked. It didn't work as well as I wished it would. Like post up Big Z, it worked a time or two. It also didn't work a time or two. He threw some bad passes. He didn't make quick enough decisions. Um, And it was sometimes they resulted in turnovers. And all I'm sitting there thinking is if he can't do this with these guys on him, then he's got no shot of being effective against different competition because they really didn't have anybody down low, which is why we were trying to go to him. Um, You know, they didn't, I mean, he was literally posting up against a guy like, a foot shorter than him and not a big muscular guy either. And, but I mean, we knew that already and I don't blame big Z. Like he's not a back to the basket guy. Like that's not his, I mean, I'm not saying he can't do that. Of course he can do that. And he did it a few times, but that's not, we don't have a guy like that right now. And I mean, maybe like I said, maybe it's a do on the bench, but um, yeah, they, they, I would say, and, and this is another reason it's hard to, like, like know if this is something because we are so on such a short lease personnel wise if because i mean they said in the pregame you know like they were practicing all week with like really sliding your feet playing straight up hands up don't reach do not get in foul trouble we can't afford any foul trouble um and so it's hard to know how much of what i would consider uh not that great a defense for large chunks of the game was due to them not being able to be as aggressive as they want. Unfortunately, I don't really think it was because mostly what was happening is they were getting open twos. I mean, it's twos. I'm used to playing one ones and twos. Uh, <laughs> I've been playing last night, but they were getting open looks at the three point line all game. And they were, they did hit more than I think is probably they're going to hit in that first half. But they got the same looks in the second half. They just doinked them all. You know what yeah, I mean? Like they yeah. were, they, they were they, pulling and they, up. They, they hit some contested ones too. Uh, the the uh, that's I what I'm th- saying. But they were shooting contested ones in the second half as well. They just couldn't get any of them to go down. Yeah, and they yeah. hit and they shot some open ones. But yeah. but I mean, like I said, that's what happened in the first half. Is we gave them too many open looks and they hit them, and then they got confident and then they started hitting everything leaners. Mm-hmm. You know, fadeaways, well guarded ones. Um, but I mean, I think anybody that looks at that would say, I mean, the the final score does not tell you what happened in that game as far as it was pretty sloppy for a large part of that. I mean, on on all sides, there was some, you know, runouts that weren't executed properly, some bad passing, um, like I said, some some miscommunications on defense. And but like I said, it is early, and you hope that Cal can iron all this stuff out. And I would and, say... and and there's some exhaustion too. There's like there's some you can you can see at certain times where there's like fatigue. Yeah, well, that's a but that's just a a perennial problem for us because our I would say our biggest the thing that I'm the most nervous about it's still not personnel. Although I do wish we had a couple of different pieces to round out this team, um, but. 
it's mostly it, it's hard to quantify it, but th they don't have swagger right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, however you want to put it, these these the, these things that aren't specific, so therefore they're not like the greatest, you know, um, basketball guru critiques. But they're not clicking. They're not fluid. They're not. They don't have swagger. You know what I mean? And these guys, you could see. I mean, they. You want them to come out and play with energy and with swagger. They they don't look like they're having a good time. Is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, and and I mean, at the end they did when they were when they started to you know get, make a bunch of shots and stuff. But the first three quarters of that game, you can just tell with the body language and everything. Like they're a little frustrated. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like I said. It's it doesn't mean anything long term necessarily, but it's not how you wished it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you would if you had your druthers, it would be that they are friggin' just chest bumping and high fiving and yeah, yeah. Uh, smoking people. You know what I mean? That's what you'd want. So, um, yeah, I mean, in this like I said, with no not knowing what any other team's records are and stuff, and like I said, in the next half a dozen games, we're gonna like we're gonna see Lipscomb play other teams and see how good they are and we're going to see troy play other teams and see how good they are and you'll be able to maybe kind of judge a little bit like i mean i don't know like this team it's you know if you look at what they did last year but it's all different guys and it's yeah you know totally different thing happening so i don't know maybe that team's not that bad but i mean and even if they are bad like i said we still beat them by 19 19 and and that was with them shooting really well in the first half and us being a little bit discombobulated and not playing our best. And like I said, I mean, thank God for uh throw. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, I mean, he's just willing this team. It, it, I mean, thank God he's there, but I, I'm just looking at it and I'm like, man, I just don't think that's going to be enough to win sec games. Well, you know the I mean? thing about it, but the thing about a Dutiero dude is like, um, I mean, so he had 23 points, six rebounds, four steals. Um, he he was eight of 10. I mean, he had 23 points, he took 10 shots. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty good, man. You know, uh, he was also, you know, six of seven from the free throw line. And, and he is a guy, you know, like, look, that's a big, strong guy right there too. Like, I do think he's a guy that, can get fouled a lot and it, like, like he's a his his body's gonna like it doesn't have to translate he's played in the sec <laughs> you know like i mean he he play, he's played at kentucky the last two years you know so um like, yeah so he, he knows what he's doing and like he and it's got and he's gonna be you know i mean right now you kind of look at it and you think like yeah uh Thiero and, and boogie are probably gonna be our two leading scores uh i think nelly davis is gonna like, he's still He's still deferring too much. Um, he's not he's finding still, his he's, flow. He's still he's still dinged up. You could tell. I mean, I was dude, there, there was about seven times tonight where I was like, because because our biggest problem is how injured everybody is and how how, how mm -hmm. we're already we don't we don't we don't have a really well, he's deep he, team. do you see him messing with that wrist a lot? Well, that one time he was like, yeah, took himself out of the game. I mean, I yeah. don't know what he did, what kind of an injury it is, but it's something apparently that he can tweak. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I was surprised to see him come back in because he looked like it was real. Like he, maybe he re-injured it again. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I mean, there was, I mean, when, uh, what's his name was down Rich, on the floor. Rich, Rich, Richmond's with, on the ground. I mean, yeah. And, I mean, and, and once he was grabbing his hand, you were like, at least like, okay, oh, well, this oh, isn't oh, going to be. Carter. Yeah. Knox was grabbing his hand. Billy Richmond's grabbing his ankle or cat. I don't know if he was, I don't know if his ankle, cat, cramp. I don't know if it was cramp. I hope it was cramps. I don't know what it was, but uh that it wasn't I, good they were they were down around his ankle yeah yeah i they don't know they, I mean, didn't, they didn't show it again i don't, I don't even know what happened there i, I know he no, didn't go I, back in the game yeah and then uh yeah and then when, you could tell from the body language when he was flopping around on the floor not not uh Knox, uh that it wasn't a cramp like something no, was that, wrong. no like, that hurt that hurt yeah yeah, and I mean, I I guess he just really jammed the crap out of his finger. I mean, I don't know, maybe broke well, it. Who knows? He, well, he saw you saw him on the. It might have dislocated. Who knows? He had him tape. He had them taped together after yeah. that. So um, yeah, and we've all done that. I mean, once I realized it was on his hand, 
even in the worst case scenario, say it's a broken finger, that's not the season ender that you, I mean, yeah. when you see a yeah. guy writhing on the ground, you're like, well, okay, well, is this it? Is this over? Is this the yeah. end of the road for this guy? And it's, you know, and with a hand injury, it's not good. I mean, we don't need somebody to be out for three games with a freaking broken finger, but you know that they can come back, you know? So, but, yeah, I mean, and, but I expect it seemed, it seemed like it was probably just a dislocation or a bad jam, yeah. but yeah, and I expect... a bad jam, a bad jam hurts like stubbing your toe. Like it hurts. Oh yeah. Bad. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But Nelly, I expect Nelly to, to keep getting better and better as he gets healthier and, and more comfortable. He's be, he's very, he's, He's not shot hunting at all. Uh, mm -hmm. Like he's he's very like he defers. I think too much. There's like he he's not he's not going and getting his. Like he's deferring a lot, and I think he's just trying to work his way back. You know, um, he's taken a you know he he made he took three threes, made two of them. Which is by the way, we need you. To, we I, we definitely need him to do that. Uh, but he played 32 minutes. Uh, he's a good rebounding guard too. You know, he grabs six rebounds uh, from the guard spot, which is great. Uh, and he plays good defense, like he gets his nose in there and stuff. But I think I expect you know him to be better and better. But, um, you know, but Boogie goes for 20 points, uh, tonight, uh, had four steals, three assists. Um, you know, I, I, Boogie was good, you know, he did. He and, and I think I do think that the guards, you know, like with, with Boogie and DJ and DJ again, you don't have to wonder if, if it can translate to the SEC. He's played in the SEC last year. Uh, them getting downhill, like that's gonna translate. Like, uh, like those those guys are gonna be hard to stay in front of. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. Boogie Flan's gonna go to the NBA and be hard to stay in front of. That's like that. Why he's gonna go to the NBA after he's done with this season? <laughs> he's gonna go to the. NBA. He's not gonna be here next year because that guy's ninety nine percent of people can't stay in front of that guy, right? And so I did like. And so gearing up to the big positive. Um, I think Cal told them, said, Hey, you want to know how you like create the separation that we need to create here? Drive the ball to the basket, put your head down. Like we're going to get fouled or you're going to make a bucket or both. And the guys that really decided, Hey, that's just what we're doing. Well, you know, was, was boogie and, and the do, and, um, uh, they just, and there was nothing that you could do about it. You know, they were just going to get to the basket and you were going to have to foul them or give them an easy bucket. And they got a bunch of M ones. And I thought DJ Wagner played well, this game, he had 14 points, uh, five assists. Um, so I thought, I thought one turnover, five assists to one turnover. I thought, I thought he was, he played really like a really controlled game. I mean, that's like a, that's the game. Like if we can get that game from DJ all year long, like that's the game we need. If you can get 14 points, uh, and five assists from Wagner, you're, you're like, I, that's, well, I think what, that's all you can ask for, I think from him. Cause he's not, um, he's not going to shoot a bunch of like step back three. That's not what he's doing out there. He's going to get, get up. Uh, he's going to be a lead guard defender, be a really, he's going to be a great, you know, perimeter defender. And he's going to try to get to the bat and he's going to shoot open threes. I mean, like I said, he made, he made, you know, two of them tonight and he can, but they're rhythm shots and stuff uh, mm -hmm. which i like him shooting but so i thought that that was better than like detroit i didn't like you know like the, in the troy game where he went he didn't score uh but he just wasn't that aggressive like he's he wasn't trying to that much it wasn't like he took a bunch of shots and if you look at the shot distribution you know you had big z shot nine shots uh theros shot 10 shots flan shot 10 shots janelle davis shot five shots that's got to go up uh that's got to mm -hmm. go up by double um Wagner shot nine, Billy Richmond shot seven, Knox shot two. Um Knox probably gotta get more shots than that if he's gonna play more minutes like that. But um but it's good. Uh I thought that it was they were that's that's that that's very unselfish. You get you're that's an unselfish team when it's spread out like that, which is good. Yeah, it's not I, I don't feel like that people are dominating the ball like in a way that's selfish, but it does feel I do wish. I still haven't quite figured out what Cal is trying to get them to do on offense. Um, I wish I saw the ball go dribble drive, perimeter, kick out, swing more, um, which is what which is what they did. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They had they probed a little bit more 
and then kicked to the corner and then moved it around the horn. And if it wasn't there, they did it again. You know, get the guy back out on the top with the ball. Someone come set a screen, yeah. go downhill, pump it to the corner, swing it around. And they were getting guys open. I feel like our ball is just moving around the top of the perimeter. And it's some of the guys are still getting some shots um, but by doing that. Or or they're or they're penetrating just to the top of the key. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of times our guys, when they pass it out, they get like that one dribble step to about the free throw line, and then they kick it to the elbow three, which is still fine. I mean, we're getting some shots off of that, but n- nothing's better than the deep penetration and then kick it around. I think. And it- well, I, I think the lack of like of a true post option is um it's hard to know what the offense is going to look like without it you know like where um you know they like you said they tried to throw the ball down there to big like but that's not going to be the offense that's not like where that's not what we're going to do um and you know without 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 Jonas in there like it's just you don't have this um I don't I, I've now I don't know what Cal's going to do once he does have him, but I'm assuming it's going to be different. You know, it, it's just like it. It's uh, it's just. It, I mean, I've played enough basketball to know if you like are playing a team, you're like, hey, there's really like not much of a chance they're going to like really try to throw the ball down low. Like that really that that <laughs> that that makes your job a lot easier as a defender. You're like, oh, okay, we're going to like defend defend very differently. Like there's. And, and, even, and, you know, and it worked a little bit. Like the, the problem was, is that like, even when you did throw it down there and they, and they were afraid of it a little bit. Cause I mean, he is seven, two after all. So they would bring help. Um, but he's just not, he's not a gifted passer. Like the few times he tried to kick it out, he, you know, those passes yeah. have got to be intentional and on the money in order to be effective. Yeah. And, and Big Z is a very talented player in a lot of ways. And he can, he's one of those guys, honestly, he's, I mean, nothing like us, but he's, he has the same issue that we have, which is he's, he has weaknesses in his game. And he's the type of player that needs help to be, to help, you know, you got to help me help you. And I can be very effective on the right kind of team. I can be a pest on the boards. But if I, I mean, I've, I've been on teams where, Every nobody else wants to rebound, and I've got my guy boxed out, but I don't get any rebounds because nobody mm-hmm. body like their guys come in and like I didn't, then I'm not helping my team at all. You know what I mean? Or if the guys that like don't want you to help a set a screen for them, and you, you know what I mean? Like I I'm the kind of guy I need to screen for a better player, roll, and I need him to help me score, and I can score it, but I just you don't want if you see me dribbling trying to break my guy down, yeah. You better. You might want to jo- start jogging back to protect the goal because it's probably going to be a turnover. You know what I mean? And um, Big Z's talented, and I think I think having another big man that's the focus could really open up how he could help you. It's just he's limited in certain places. And dude, without Brazil, I mean, when it's when he's all you have down there, he's you know it's it's not great. It's not optimal. Like we're gonna, we're gonna definitely. We need Brazil back bad, and we need our, I think, well, our I other think, big men healthy. I, I think you know. So Big Z played twenty seven minutes here. I, I think that he's probably a guy that like you. Ideally, you play twenty minutes a game. You know, you get you plays about half the game. You know, uh, it keeps it. You know, he was he played, but there was one point in this at the end of this first half, like, he was absolutely gassed, dude. Like you could tell like he was, I mean, he's a, he's a big guy, dude. Like, I mean, you can't, you can't play him those kind of like a ton of minutes like that, but like a fresh him. Cause like, I like him protecting the rim. I think he's a good rim protector uh, mm-hmm. that he's not a banger, but like you drive in there, throw up some nonsense. Like that's probably getting sent back mm-hmm. uh, stretching the floor. I think he's very much proven that like you got to guard him. Uh, I mean, he will make you pay for not guarding him out there. That's going to be great. Like that's that's a huge asset, and he's not a terrible rebounder either. Uh, like he's a uh, he he's uh he can he, I mean he's seven two, but you know he's a better rebounder than like Connor Vanover was. Like he's uh-huh. he's grabbing you know, grabbing that ball, squeezing it. He's not getting it now. Don't lower it down. Some of this, some of the stuff too. Like you know, and I know how this goes, dude. Like when they are throwing him the ball. Hey man, like throw it in the right spot. 
You know, like sometimes you're trying to do some stuff with him that you're like, that's just not, that's asking too much. You know, like trying to throw some bounce pass that's at his, that it comes up at his knees, like and stuff. And you're like, dude, that's not going to work. Like, like when you're throwing a big Z, that thing always needs to be up there, dude. Like throw it over the top to that dude so that he doesn't have to bring it up when he catches, like mm. have it so he can keep it up here. Um, but yeah, he's going to be a great piece, dude. But, uh, we he can't be your only five. That's not going to work. Uh, and yeah, so if and, those and, other guys stay injured and he's like all you have as a big man, he's going to be frustrated. You know what I mean? He just and, and he's just going to he just can't play those kind of minutes, dude. Like, I mean, I mean, it's he can't play the whole game. Uh, and you know, and like, look, like I said, hey, God bless him. Like, I like, I, I think the arrow was did a good job, but that's a team he could do that on. Uh, and he's a big guy and an athletic dude. And I'm not saying that he can't, like he's going to play the four and he's going to play the three and you're going to move him around some. And, and I'm sure he'd try to bang with whoever, and he's a big, strong dude. Uh, but that, I don't think that's what you want him doing. Ideally. Like I, I'm sure he's willing to do it, but like, ideally you don't have him playing at the five because He's he's a really good he's got a really good nose for the ball like he, you kind of want him being able to get in the passing lanes and and come out of there with it and stuff he's he's really good at that uh, you don't simply want him just kind of like going shoulder to shoulder with someone in the post all game long you know and so uh, but I have I mean I think we're gonna get Brazil back I, that didn't look like any season ending kind of thing for sure uh, but Jonas is the guy that you really need like you really need you really need your all SEC center. Uh, that would, that would be good. Like when you, when you get to sec play, well, what if I told you, Jake, it's easy to forget. What if I told you that there's an all sec center on this team? That would be nice to have when you get into the sec. That'd be really great. If you had that guy. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I, there's still pieces here. There's still time. I, I definitely am still concerned. Um, I think that the shooting looks a little bit better. Um, I think these guys still need to gel more. I mean, it could, literally could be just as simple as a lot of these guys, you know, yeah. have because because they're all attackers. They themselves need to learn where mm-hmm. to be, and it, because there definitely was a time where I noticed one play where, um, and it's just young guy or or I don't know. Not, somebody attacked and was driving in and I looked and all four players just stood on the perimeter. Yeah. And it was one of those things where it was like, there's all kinds of room to, for people to cut to. And it's like, he just went, he's like down low on the block now. And there's three guys down there. I hope he can pass it out of there. Now it ended up, I think it was, I can't remember. So he, he got bumped on the baseline and ended up shooting free throws. I can't even remember who it was, but I remember looking at it going, why is no one cutting? He, it's, it's not likely he's going to be able to pass through those guys all the way out to the perimeter. And if somebody cuts down the lane right now, it's a short bounce pass to a dunk. And there's just some of that stuff that's going on. And it could be too. Some guys are probably resting a little bit because it is very difficult to play those high minutes and play defense hard, hard and then play offense hard and be out there the whole game. That is yeah. very tiring. Yeah. yeah. If you're DJ Wagner and you're playing 35 minutes, like you're tired, dude. Like, mm-hmm. just, dude I don't care. I mean, I know he's young and in shape and everything. You're tired. Like you're garden college athletes. You're playing hard. Like you're, you're tired. Uh, the, I am ter- I am terrified of injuries right now because I do think we're thin and um, because they are going to have to play a lot of minutes. Um, I hope these guys can stay healthy because we're, we're a, uh, I mean, we really can't afford to lose anybody, no, but no, no. we certainly can't afford to lose any of the main guys. And, um, you know, we're, we're one bad ankle sprain or knee twist from being kind of in trouble here. Oh, yeah, dude. Now, if you, if Thierro or Boogie or DJ or Big Z, I mean, Big Z hits the floor sometimes. Sometimes man, I'm just every, every time that dude ends up on the floor, I'm like, oh my God. What do we do if like if this whatever's wrong with uh, Jonas like if that, if that keeps nagging and Brazil is out for like a couple of weeks if Big Z got injured what would we do? 
I don't know, dude. I don't You'd know. You'd have to play like, just play like fastball. Yeah, with no subs. You can't even be like, we'll just wind them. You're like, hey, you five guys, just you can play as fast as you can. I don't know. Mike D'Antoni run, get a shot up every eight seconds. You need a bench. You need a bench for that, though. Yeah, I guess we have to do the opposite. Maybe we have to take the air out of the ball. Slow it way down. 28 seconds off the clock every time. You're going to take it all the way down and then just someone drive to the basket. Uh, Okay, two questions before we wrap up, though. Uh, One, uh, are you less concerned about the shooting? I mean, is that an encouraging thing? Have you felt like the last two games, like we shot the ball? I mean, I'm not. Did we? I know. Obviously, we did. The numbers say we did, but it also looks good. Like I'm like, th- these guys are going to hit enough threes. I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, the shooting definitely looks better. I wish. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm always crapping on. And Z, it's by, but... and, and it's not and it's not by just like one guy either. Like it's spread out. You're like, oh, we have guys that can make threes. Mm-hmm. I, I I I could tell for a little bit there. Big Z was kind of hunting threes because, of course, he hit his first yeah. one coming off of a six game. So hit his first two. And then it's not uncommon for you know, like then he started. Well, kinda... dude, at that at that point, I think he I think he hit it for his first two, didn't he? Uh, maybe, or it was at least his first two out of three, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, if he hit his first two, he's like, guys, I am nine out of my last ten. Freaking, give me the hmm. ball, <laughs> like yeah. which you know. I, by the way, I would do that too. I'd be like, guys, I'm nine out of my last ten. Just like freaking, well, give shoot, it to me. Shooting, yeah, dude, shooting. We all know shooting three, making threes is addictive. You know what I mean? Like you, you uh, make a couple and you start just finding yourself standing out there waiting for someone to give you that ball. Yeah. I, I always have to tell myself, I mean, as somebody who's, I mean, can hit a three, but I mean, I've got to be like, I've got to earn my ability to shoot threes. I've got to go get a bunch of rebounds and put some, get the ball, put it back in. Then I'm allowed to shoot threes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other question, which is a little different is, uh, is, uh, is Boogie Flynn the best freshman that Arkansas has had in the last? Well, I mean, I'm not going to do ever stuff because I have to go way back and think about my childhood. Is he the best freshman we've had in the last 10 years? Yeah. I mean, you know, Nick Smith might have been good, but we, you know, we never found out about that really. And he, he, doesn't look, he doesn't look like Boogie Flynn to me, though. No. What, whatever happened to him? He's still, he's playing in the NBA, but, um, you play, you play for Charlotte, or? Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte, yeah, hmm. and he's had some good games. Like he's healthy and and he's playing good. But he didn't. I mean, and, and they, actually, their games are similar, uh, actually. But I don't know if he has that. I don't know if he has the same burst that Boogie has and the ability to get to the rim quite like Boogie does. But their mid range games kind of similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, but that and also I don't know if Nick Smith's handle is as good as Boogie's. Yeah, it's hard to say. I I I remember thinking Nick Smith were, did remind me of like a, a little bit like Kyrie Irving ish. I mean, obviously when Kyrie Irving was in college. Yeah. But um um so he did seem like he had a lot of upside. It's just he was hurt all the time. And then you know when he played, he would be like play two games and then re get hurt. Yeah. And then so he never we never really got to see him at full speed. And thank God Boogie is at full speed. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I, it's the best player freshman we've had in a long time. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you're you're talking about a guy. I mean, I think he's averaging uh, seventeen points a game or something right now at this point. I mean, I don't, we haven't had a freshman do that any time recently. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you know, like I mean, Jalen Williams is one of my favorite guys, but I mean, what he wasn't that his freshman year. You know, he wasn't doing that. Uh, Anthony Black's yeah, and- great. He wasn't doing that. Like it's it, he's he wasn't the lead guy like that. You know, like uh, I mean, Anthony Black was your point guard, but he he's not Boogie Flan point guard. Yeah, they were different. Anthony Black's kind of freak body mm-hmm. and not nearly as skilled shooter or, or like you know offensive player right out the gate. Um, so I do think I do think too. Like the thing that I've been really impressed with Boogie because you know I want you know before the season I watched tape on him and stuff. And, and you sort of knew that like this guy kid, this guy's fast, dude. Like this, and this like, he's gonna, like that's going to translate like, like the speed translates, you know, like, this guy's really fast and he can handle the ball. He can get to the rim. If he can make tough finishes, you saw all these crazy finishes he was making in, you know, against not just like against high school teams against, you know, elite AAU prep teams, you know, and you're like playing against other D one athletes, you know, and you're like, Oh yeah, this is gonna work. 
but I will say, like, and you just when you just looked at his frame, I you, I did wonder, you know, uh, I hope I hope we can play defense, and I've been impressed with his defense, and I I mean I know you could be like, well, these aren't SEC schools, but I was impressed with his defense against Kansas. Uh, I I I think he's gonna. I'm not saying well, he's going mean, to be the best defender, but un- he's going to be. Unfortunately, Kansas was our best game so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think he's going to be fine on defense, even when we get to SEC play. He's annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to get up under you, and you know what it is. Yeah, he's not. He's not that worried about you going around him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, you know, uh, by, to... by the way, which is not something I've ever been able to really like. I wish. I'm it must be. It, mu- it, mu- it must be nice. Everyone's going around me unless I'm taking away their jump shot. I mean, I got to choose one. I'm either there, giving you your shot or there, there was another time where there was a loose ball, like it was just laying on the floor, and the arrow's like, "Let me just grab, let me pick that up, and then just freaking have my face on." And you're like, "Okay, that's just like a step. Like you didn't like you weren't running. You just had to bend down, pick the ball up off the floor, and then just have your chin on the rim. Like you're like, dude, what like." If only, dude. Like that must be the coolest thing ever. Just, be, just give me that freaking. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's so hard to think about what or or to know what this what we would feel about this team with exactly the same makeup and the exact same performance if this was just another random muscleman year because. Mm-hmm. It's impossible to not not view this year through the lens of this Calipari yeah. hype higher. You know what I mean? And what what Calipari's done in his career, and the type of player that he gets, and the number of players that are in the NBA under his tutelage. It's like you're looking at this with different kind of glasses on. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. I think probably if this was just you didn't know and these guys were all, you know, good recruits, but maybe not like the number one guys. And, you know, you weren't sure what you were getting. And this was just another muscle. You'd be like, wow, we, some of these guys are really good. You know, yeah, I mean? yeah. it's just this is uh, there was almost no way for this not to be initially underwhelming just because you're, you know, literally the sky's the limit and you're thinking, I mean, that's that's the downside of being someone like Calipari is it's kind of sweet 16 or disappointed. Yeah. And it's been that way for really ever since he, I mean, really even at Memphis for yeah. him, like, no. but probably he could have got away, but definitely since he went to Kentucky. So he's been this way for 15 years where it's like your expectation is if you don't make the sweet 16, oh. uh, that's what happened. I just, I just not knocked over a light. Sorry, there we go. Dang, it got Focus dark up. in there, bro. I thought you knocked over your whole camera. No, it was just the light. It looked like the camera fell over how dark it got. You don't have a sweet setup like me. I've uh, <laughs> taken my my blue my blanket down and just let it's like whatever. I'm in the freaking bunker, dude. Let's yeah, dude. Let everybody see it. Got this yeah. cool. Yeah, uh, so not well, not to elongate this conversation necessarily, but I wanted to actually bring this up last time, and I didn't. Um, one, so Arkansas is three and one, and has not lost to anyone that we were supposed to beat. Mm. Like I, I, I wanted to be Baylor. I thought we could beat Baylor. Vegas didn't say we were going to be Baylor. Mm. Uh, the rankings, which you know didn't matter really that much at that time, they didn't say we were going to be Baylor in Dallas. They didn't like no. So you still have that where it's like, hey, you haven't dropped one, which is easy to do, by the way. And, and like, we, since we've been doing this show, we have done that. Like, were you... Well, and basketball is just that way. Basketball, yeah. I mean, good teams lose to nobodies all the time. Yeah. Because just to what we saw in that first half. That, these are all still really good basketball players. I mean, everybody that can play in college at this level can sh- can get hot and hit eight threes. Yeah. Like, every one of these guys has done that in high school before at some point. Most yeah. like you can get a team of low level level guys, you get them some energy and some confidence and they can knock down a bunch. And and the other thing is true too. You can have the best players in the world and they can get stiff and start just doinking everything yeah. Yeah. and not be able to find the bottom of the rim. Yeah. And so, I mean, it happens all the time where really good schools yeah. lose. Like you're like, what? They lost 
Yeah. So, so, well, so, so the optimistic take is, Hey, we haven't lost anyone that is it like where it's like, Oh crap. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, and we haven't had our whole roster at all. We haven't had a, a center at all. Like not the, the guy, you know, our starting five guy. Um, and and you still are are winning games. Now it doesn't look the way you want it to look necessarily all the time. And like there's concerns, but some of those concerns even have are starting to be alleviated with the shooting. Really worried about injuries. So it's all good. But um I guess let's just let's this is the hypothetical. If Jonas is back. By the time, I don't know, in, in two weeks or whatever, or by the time you get to SEC play, whatever it is, he's back for the the for the big part of the season. Um, what is because because like there, you do have to set like some kind of expectations here. Um, what is a record that you're you're good with? Like so, like what if if I said so they play they're going to play thirty one games. If I said they go, um, if they go twenty five and six, are you good? Uh, honestly, for the for the regular season, obviously, I because I because I win because, all the games. But because by the I way, I, I I I think twenty five and six is like I would be completely fine with. I was going through it, and I kind of I'm gonna go. I just wanted to also go on record. I'm I'm gonna say that. Uh, Arkansas is going to finish uh, 24 and seven and I'm going to be okay. And I'm going to be good with that. Um, I'm so skeptical that, I mean, I would, I would have to look at the schedule and try to break it down to be smart, but did I, I'll be happy if this team stays healthy, gets 22 wins and makes it into the tournament. And then if we can make a run in the tournament, I don't care what happens in the yeah, regular yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, that that is part of the thing. Like, I, I mean, I think subconsciously at the at the beginning of every new season, especially when you've got a lot of really good recruits or when you have like a really good coach come in or something. Every year, you're kind of hoping for that, like where you just start stomping people and then you're like, start to go, is are, are we is this the year? Is this the year? And then you're one of those teams that only loses two games all year. You know yeah. what I mean? Like like that one Kentucky team or Purdue last year, like you want to be one of those teams. And then, and like, eventually you're kind of looking and you're like, all right, we're not You're It's, it's not that year. It's not the magic year where we're like, you know, dominating. So I guess we'll just, we'll just see how good we can be. And then you're just trying to figure it out. But that's why initially all these, there's initial, not disappointment, but you're, everybody is kind of like, could this be the magic season? And then you're slowly figuring out, okay, I mean, not that it necessarily isn't, but you're not that shoe in team that's like, oh my God, is anyone gonna ever gonna beat these guys? They're freaking scoring a hundred points every game and blowing teams out by 30. You know what I mean? Um, so uh yeah, I mean, I, I think these this team's gonna lose some games, personally. Yeah. Um they're just they're made up a little bit atypical. We're not deep. Um, we're okay shooting you know what i mean we don't have like a bunch of snipers um we have a bunch of good shooters good players um i think i think we're probably i i I would be i mean dude 26 if we had 26 wins i would be ecstatic i think this team is like a between like floor i mean obviously i mean obviously there is no floor you could have injuries and stuff but if they stay healthy i feel like floor is like 18 that's a bad season for this team and but i think their ceiling might be like 24 yeah mm-hmm. yeah I'll, I'll be i'll be surprised if, if i mean dude that's good like when you win more than 24 games you're good you're really yeah. good yeah so well i just i heard a national guy say like it's like oh, i gotta sell all my stock in arkansas this field is 68 i know they're watching for sure um He's like, I'm selling my Arkansas stock. Look, they're gonna be, they're gonna win 25 games, get in the tournament. But and I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like, okay, like, did you was your stock Arkansas wins the national championship and you're selling that stock? Because what do you mean you're selling your stock? They're gonna win 25 games, but they're not gonna win the, they're not gonna compete for a national championship. I'm like, dude, all right. Um, any team with 25 wins you can. has a has a shot once you get into the tournament. <laughs> yeah, dude. 
<laughs> dude. Especially, There's only especially if you're playing in the SEC. If you're if you're like in the SEC or the Big Ten or the Big Twelve and you win 25 games, what are you talking? Like you're you're a contender. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I I would say I would say the same thing. If and I'm I was not even try- say, I, I'm not even saying we're going to win 25 games necessarily, but I'm like I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not willing to sell my Arkansas could be really good and you know even also, like also said, 20, because 25 Cal- wins. Also but because- I am I would sell my stock if I was really worried about making money, and it was an actual stock. I probably would sell my stock on national championship just based on what I've seen. Yeah, but also, I mean, that doesn't mean it can't happen. Obviously, anything can happen, but. It, you know, you, I don't know, like th- th- there's, there's some weaknesses. Yeah. You know? And, and the other thing that you always got to remember too. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. Kentucky fans like to get up in the, up in the comments of stuff, but it was like, now nah, you guys are going to see, it's going to like, it's going to suck and you're just going to, you're going to hate it. And you got sold the bill, bill of goods or whatever. I don't know, whatever. But one thing I do know about, about, uh, John Calipari, Kentucky fans and Arkansas fans. Uh, cause I've seen it over and over and over again is his teams get better. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they tend to, they, they have had some roller coaster seasons. You know, they have gotten, they've been okay, gotten bad and then gotten a lot better. I mean, how many and years, how many I hope years, that doesn't happen. How many years has like Kentucky been like pretty good, but like, you know, like they're not the top of the SEC. And then the SEC tournament rolls around, and at that point, everyone's like, "I know what you don't want to do. You don't want to have to go through Kentucky because they're playing out of their minds right now. Like, because they—that's they, just how. Now I know that the same thing would be like, yeah, but then you get in the dance and you can't win. You know, whatever, all this stuff, whatever. But uh, I do know that uh, playing Kentucky early has always been better than playing Kentucky late. Yeah, yeah, and and honestly, to to those Kentucky fans, like I'm, dude, I don't. I'm not pretending like I'm some Nostradamus and I'm saying all, all of my enthusiasm about Calipari is based on that. John Pelfrey, that John Pelfrey was our coach once. So, Hey, got us some slack, man. Well, and it's, and it's based on hope. I'm hoping because they might be right that Calipari is going, you know, struggles to get over the hill and he's a little bit of an NBA factory and, and, and all that stuff. But he also, has won a national championship and has been successful everywhere he's gone there. And, you know, dude, winning the national championship is a fickle mistress like that. It, it there, I mean, look at Mark few, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like it, it is tough. Well, he's and, a terrible, don't you know, he's a terrible coach. Cause he's never, he hasn't, well, he's terrible, dude. Kentucky yeah. fans and, be telling you how bad Mark few sucks because this guy getting all these good recruits. <laughs> Hasn't even won a national championship. That guy is hot garbage. I'm just saying things that things in 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 sports, especially when we win championships, and it doesn't matter at, at every level. I mean, look at the Hogs in baseball. You know what I mean? It's like there there are always these things. John Stockton and Carl Malone. Like I mean, you know, Charles Barkley always says he's like I, the biggest problem I had was I had the unfortunate luck of being really really good when Michael Jordan was around, and it's like. There's you can be really good and a few things go wrong and you, you know, blah, and and like that may happen here, but also he we could win a national championship with him. Either thing is possible. And if it turns out that to be the thing that they say, you know, I mean, it's like, dude, we I I still think it, it, it's a good gamble. I mean, M- Musselman almost screwed us like we were about to be left with because look at what Kentucky got. And they're Kentucky. Dude, we were about to get Pelfrey up in here again. You know what I mean? Ronnie Brewer was about to be our head coach. <laughs> I mean, and, and I mean, and I don't know, maybe that wouldn't have been that bad. I'm just saying. But he wasn't going to be bringing in five stars, I'll tell you that. No, I mean, look, Kentucky tried to get everyone. You know what I mean? They tried to get Alabama's coach, friggin' Connecticut's coach. I mean, they tried to get. They are. They, I mean, didn't they try to get Buzz? Or no, they tried to get Texas. No, um, the guy that got fired from Texas. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know like what all the offers were, but hey, listen, I know Kentucky fans say they're ecstatic with Mark Pope, and I and, I, and they are because like he's a Kentucky guy, and you know they uh, ain't. And I hope. I, it, and, I, and I'm I, not I, saying that. I'm not. I'm not even throwing shade at Mark Pope. He he may end up being the next. Um, well, they're ecstatic with know. him right now because they just beat Duke. So, like, he's like the greatest coach of all in all of they. All time. I don't care what, they, but I don't care what they said. They were not happy about that 
when that when that hire happened. No, not, not 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 when you were like, we're gonna go get Scott Drew. Oh wait, no, no we're not. We're gonna go get you know, uh, you know, whoever. Uh, we're gonna go get you know, dude to come from the NBA or like all this stuff because we can get whoever we want. And they're like, yeah, like you, yeah, hey, you know, we're, it's the old. Uh, every time the Arkansas football job comes up, you know, and they say, everyone's like, dude, I know this. You should probably call call John Gruden immediately. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the thing is that with coaching, it is so weird because you and I wish there was somebody. I mean, you make a lot of money if you could figure out how to analyze this and get it right. But sometimes there's these guys that are always good. And as long as they're your coach, they're going to probably have some success and then they'll have two bad years and they'll get fired and then they'll go somewhere else really good. I mean, I feel like these guys that are bouncing from Notre Dame to Auburn to, yeah. you know, uh, you know, the same guys are coaching the same five coaches. I feel like are coaching at every good school. They just, they have, they go through a bad three year snap, they get fired and they go somewhere else and they're pretty good. But then there's other guys where they do you do hire a nobody. I mean, this is what we were hoping um, our football coach would have been. And it doesn't really look like it's going to be, but I was hoping he was going to be one of those nobody hires that just steps up and is really, really good. I mean, I, I maybe, maybe people that pay attention know, but like, I, I'm not exquisitely paying close attention to the NFL, but I'm looking at them. I'm like, who, what happened? How is Minnesota good all of a sudden with just like change a few things and Detroit's freaking good all of a sudden. And, they didn't hire and what I'm saying is they didn't hire John Gruden. You know right. what I mean? Like they hired somebody that I'd never heard of and it's working, you know, and um, and that may happen for Kentucky. This guy, I don't think it's a bad idea to hire someone who's really passionate about your program. I actually think they did the right thing. Like, I think if you can't get the big name, yeah, if you can't and, get Dan, they, if you can't get Dan Hurley and they were about to freaking break the bank for him. And it's like, okay, well, if we can't get the guy we definitely are willing to break the bank for, I don't want to break the bank for, I don't want to overpay for someone that we is not our dream hire. So then I'm like, yeah, why don't you save some money, hire someone who's passionate about your program, and may, you might get hit lightning in a bottle. It might yeah, work and, out. And, who, and, and if who it was, doesn't, and who is, who then maybe good. your guy will be there yeah. next time. And who was good at BYU, too? I mean, like, it's not like you're hiring some guy with zero coaching experience that or bad coaching experience he was uh, he had won a lot of games uh byu so now i i do think with kentucky it's not the quite the same as arkansas i don't think that you can tolerate as many of those like if he ends up not being if he ends up being mediocre and your dream guy doesn't come available in the next two or three years i don't think they can do it again kentucky probably will have to just be like all right we're gonna have to overpay for a big name because yeah. they're they probably can't tolerate more than. But dude, you, here's the thing: is if two or three years, if you're at Kentucky, of, if you're if you're at Kentucky, and you're a, and you're a pretty good coach, which I think Mark Pope is a pretty good coach. We'll see how good, but I definitely don't think he's a bad coach. Uh, so he's a, he's at least a good coach. He, he might be a great coach. We'll, we'll see. But one thing I do know he's going to have is great players, mm -hmm. and and you know, like I mean. He's probably going to do well. I mean, like, like even if you're a good coach and you got like some of the best players in the country, which he's going to, right? Because it's Kentucky. There's no reason for him not to be successful. Like, I mean, you got you got big you got big money donors. You got people putting money into the program. You, you got the name on the front of the jersey. You're gonna like. I'm not under any illusions that like Kentucky doesn't still recruit great players just because it's Kentucky. It does. And so uh, let me put it this way. Like if you, if you like have a bunch of like losing seasons at Kentucky, like you're definitely the problem because uh, you should be able to get most anything you want to come in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, the reason I think not to further analyze this to death, but the reason I think that it's the right, the better option, at least as an initial try is to underpay for a guy who's got a chip on his shoulder and a lot to prove. So you're getting, you're not paying as much. You're getting a guy that really is hungry and yeah. wants to prove that he can play at this level or you know, coach at this level or whatever versus you overpay and make somebody who's not who's like in the top yeah. tier, every, but not every, the best. Every, every Kentucky and, fan is saying you're talking about what you just did, and 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 make this guy fat and happy. 
uh, you get somebody that's fat and heavy. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I think both teams did. I wouldn't put. I'm not talking about Kalapari, and we may have overdone for Kalapari, but I'm saying Kalapari is in the top. Like, I'm saying this. He's in the Hall Kentucky, of Fame. Already. If Kentucky could, if Kentucky could have pulled a top five coach in the country, yeah, they should have. Go, I'm saying, go ahead, do it, yeah. once once you can't get a top five coach in the country or even a top ten, which they were looking, they were looking at getting a top thirty guy. You know what I mean? They were talking about getting like the nineteenth best coach in the country, and they, but they were going to have to pay eight million dollars a year or something to pull him away from his job. So it's like, yeah, I think you're better off if you can't get the guy. Because if you get the guy, you pay whatever. And and for Arkansas, I do think Calipari was, I, the, I mean, all the the details are different for Arkansas and Kentucky because they are different programs. And Arkansas, the reason I think it's a, the right gamble for them versus maybe it wouldn't be for somebody else. Like I would, I think I would be on their side if 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 UCLA or Kansas had say their coach left or died or something. And Kansas had paid Kentucky, you know, and we just like went out and got him for a ton of money. I might have been like, because mm, it's that I don't know about that, because the, Kansas can sit and, and same thing Kentucky's doing. They can have a bad couple of years and they're still that program. I mean, now that won't maybe last forever, but these programs that are these blue bloods, like you got to go for like 20 years before you're like forgotten about. And but that's not true of Arkansas. Arkansas through Musselman had become a relevant, you know, program with some juice. And you are, if you hire a nobody and then struggle for three, five years, Arkansas risks completely blowing all this momentum. I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, and they've done it before because. Arkansas was a program with a ton of juice in the nineties and you know, mm -hmm. you, you win a national championship and you're good off fine eighties and nineties, lots of fight, you know, lots of elite eights and final fours and all this stuff. And you know, there was a 20 year skid there where it was like pretty rough. Uh, right. and, and, and I think Kentucky can, and Kentucky can have a bad two or three years and not worry about losing their cachet. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Doesn't I look like, Arkansas... doesn't look like this year is going to be one of those years. No, no, I'm not. I'm not saying. Like I said, I'm not saying they will. I'm saying the risk is there. Yeah. Where you know, I think Arkansas didn't want to be like, okay, well, we'll just kind of mm. hire somebody and see how this works, and then we'll 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 see. Yeah. We'll have a gap year or something like that, or two. You know, I think Kentucky can take a flyer, and if it doesn't work out, they're still in the same place in two yeah. years. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yep. Yeah. Whereas Arkansas, like I said, maybe we might have true because. Like I said, it's all about recruiting. And if right now, Arkansas through Musselman is not, and I'm not saying it's the coolest place in the world to play, but it has some cash. Like it's, it's cool. We've, people have seen us in the tournament making elite eight runs and you're, it's going to be easier to recruit guys, no matter who you are, you go two or three years being gross <laughs> Like, and you're not going to, you're, you're going to not be able to get as good a coach because he's going to come there and go, your brand is not hot. By the, and by the, I'm going to have, here's why this all works too. So I don't care what anyone says. The Razorbacks just cooler than like everyone else's mascot. Certainly in the sec, lame mascots in the sec. You got how many tigers and bulldogs and like, I mean, every, it's just lame. Uh, you know, they did. We have the call. Well, all, all the SEC ones except for us. Ours is ours is unique. I mean, all the other ones. I mean, I mean, are, like, I mean, I, and I hate to say this. Longhorns is 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 unique. There's not a lot of other like te the Texas Longhorns is pretty good. Yeah, but, and, and Vanderbilt, whatever the heck they are, Commodores, and eh. like, who cares? But the rest of them are basically high school mascots. They're every high school. Every high school <laughs> mascot <laughs> is a is a wildcat of some variety. And a or lion, a, a lion or a, a tiger or a friggin' a bobcat, eagle. yeah, or a it's either it, it's birds of prey, you're either the golden eagles or the hawks, or you know, what, or you're a cat, and then there's the occasional bulldog that's thrown in there, and that's mostly what it is. And the razorback is unique, there's not a lot, I mean, like I said, it's not like anything else, so and, right. and, and I'm not saying we're the only ones, the you know, like I said. 
Texas Longhorns is a little bit unique, but still, I mean, it's a cow. It's not. And 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 I, mean, I, think, to, I think the Razorbacks still and got they, that. And they have to wear burnt orange. Yeah, I mean, they don't want to. That doesn't work with it. Like that's not good. I, I'm glad I don't. I don't. So, I mean, I I think I would love it if I was if I grew up in it, probably. 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 But so. I do. I mean, I don't know. Like the 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 fans that I'm the the, the all the teams I'm fans of have just really regular colors that you can't tell whether or not, because like, I mean, it's the bears, it's Navy blue and the bulls red hogs, red. It's like yeah. Cubs blue. I mean, yeah. You didn't want to, I, there's no, I don't have any purples or weird yellows or I'm not, I'm not an LSU fan. You want to wear purple and gold all over the place. No, I don't. I'm not a big fan of purple, dude. I don't think I have any purple clothes. <laughs> so I think I wouldn't like that naturally. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we've gone really long. Uh, yeah, you have to cut this episode. up into two pieces. The last half is just a just a rambling on the. We're just hanging out. The psychology of hiring coaches or something. So. Yeah, I'm not going to cut it in two. It's just going to be one, and people can just not watch. The hey, if you're still around right now, I don't know what you're doing, but. <laughs> I'm but so thanks. tired. It's, it's like 10 30. I'm so yeah. sleepy. What but are we th- talking about? Yeah, I just should get this out. All right, man. Well, uh, we'll be back uh after All the right. next game. All right, man. See Thanks, ya. Thanks, guys. See ya.